I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Out of Context Tuesday takes on Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Can I be a Christian and not go to church? That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you're learning about your Christian faith in places that you never expected to learn about your faith from, a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor... and his dog that doesn't catch treats anymore, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation, keeps us rolling. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus, but I don't have to go to church because I'm saved by grace alone. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, uh, first off, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 is a really good verse for this. Um, let us consider how to stir one another up to agape, love, and good works. <clears throat> and let us not abandon, forsake the... Um, Episun ago, um, the sort of gathering together, the meeting of one another, just as some have. But um, encourage parakaleo, uh, beg, um, uh, uh, sort of, um, uh, in, 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 sort of exhort um, one another, um, all the more um, as we see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching, so. Saved by grace alone. Saved by grace alone means saved by grace alone, not by any merit or worthiness in you. Um, saved by grace, by faith alone means faith alone saves you. Receiving Jesus, um, that saves. But, but faith, true faith, lives its life out in good works of love and service to our neighbor. Uh, faith is passive in that it receives good works, but active in that it loves and serves our neighbor. And so the writer of the Hebrews is saying, like, hey, let's get out and encourage one another to do good works and love one another. Um, and let's not squelch that love by, by, by sort of um, abandoning, just abandoning, forsaking the gathering of one another, as some have. And what this is sort of, a, it was an interesting way of going about it. So the initial way that we normally attack this problem of, hey, you know, I got Jesus and I'm fine. I don't have to go to church. The church has somehow let me down. Um, the church has somehow failed me is usually to say, um, but faith needs to be fed. But Hebrews does a different way. I'll get to faith needing to be fed in just a second. Hebrew does a different way. Hebrews does like, this is about loving your neighbor. <laughs> All right. So we think of, of me and Jesus and we're okay. And Hebrews says, no, what about your neighbor? What about those around you? They could really use you at church. They could re use you building them up. You could use you uh, loving and caring for one another. Well, 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 am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Uh, that was from Cain and not very helpful. But those people hurt me. Those people say bad things. Those people do bad things. Well, all the more reason for you to show them the love of Christ by being around the Lord's gifts. How do you love your neighbor when you abandon them? This is about loving your neighbor. Um, the sidebar... I, um, as a pastor, I have people who sudden, sometimes are going to stop going to church. They may move to a different area um, or the like. And I, I sometimes tell them, no, I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool with you moving. I'm not cool with you. I'm not coming. And not because you're not free in Christ to do that. You are free in Christ to go wherever you want. Um, but is that the best way to love and serve your neighbor? The people here really could use you. And that goes to people who felt like the church failed them, 
people, aren't you putting more law on someone who feels like the church has somehow hurt them? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, because I think you may need to hear the law. No, this is third use um, in its truest sense. Your neighbor needs you. You are saved by grace alone, and I'm not putting any laws on you. I'm asking you to love your neighbor. Your neighbor needs you. You may be just fine without them, but your neighbor, they could really use you around the Lord's gifts. They could really use you in church. They could use you singing the hymns. They could use you there. Incomplete. But notice how selfish it is. It calls out the selfishness. I don't need to be there because someone else has done this. Someone else has sinned against me or, or, or there's no reason for me to be there because I just don't need it. Because lowest common denominator American religion is I've got my faith and I'm okay. Now, um, faith needs to be watered and fed. Parable of the sower. Faith isn't a work that you do that you're in. Faith is repentance and faith, uh, repenting of your sins and living for others. Uh, can you not go to church and be saved? Yes, but all things may be permissible, but not all things are constructive. Um, what about loving your neighbor? What about your own faith being fed? What about those around you? Again, a different way of going about it a, a sort of gospel way, a loving your neighbor way of going about it, which pulls us away from us being the center of the thing and puts it all on loving and serving our neighbor. Um, Hebrews 10 is a gift, not only because it gets you out of that selfishness and says, hey, come back, but it also because it points you to your neighbor. Your neighbor really could use you there. Um, your pastor could use you there. Well, what if he's the problem? Well, then work it out with him. All right? I don't know how you can be a Christian apart from the sacrament of the altar. I, I don't know how you can be a Christian apart from the gifts. Um, wherever there's faith, there's somebody pointing to something and saying, hey, um, there's water, baptize me, um, feed me the body and blood of Jesus. But you know what? Grace alone means grace alone, so you'd be fine. But how are you loving serving your neighbor? Also, you know, I wonder, like, when you asked your sweetheart to marry you or you asked your guy asked you to marry you, did he not show up again to see you after that? After he locked you down for the long-term contract, did he disappear from your life? Um, yeah. Um, gifts are outside of you. Feeding yourself is not the way to go. Um, you need someone to call you out, someone to exhort you, someone to sort of push you sometimes um, to repent of your sins. And to believe that gospel, false belief and despair comes from you listening to yourself in an echo chamber. Um, but the way the Lord deals with that is to say, hey, what about your neighbor? Your neighbor could really use you there. Think about it. I'm Pastor George Borkart. I could use you at church too. And this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>